Hey everyone, you're watching Otaku Movie Anatomy, and today we're going back to the year 2000 to a gothic post-apocalyptic future with Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's Otaku Movie Anatomy. Do you remember Duo as Infinity? No. <laughs> this is them. <laughs> I feel like I do remember them. Yeah. This was. I like this song already. Yes. It's so 2000s. <laughs> you could tell because all anime 2000 music was always like always weirdly inspirational. <laughs> you know, it always had the female vocalist and it always sounded like they're they're like going into space every, yes, exactly. every single time. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching our Talking Movie Anatomy, everyone. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment on iTunes. Hit that thumbs up on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Popcorn Talk. To, I am your host, Yuba Ninja. <laughs> I almost forgot my name in the spirit of Michelle. Yeah, you can that find me. You can find me everywhere online at Yuma Ninja, and I'm joined by one of our regular hosts. Yeah, one of our. What happened to the rest of our regular they're, hosts? They're, unfortunately, they're here. John and uh, Michelle couldn't make it tonight, but, but it's okay. Max and I are here. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, I'm Max, and you can find me at Max Salt at everything on all the social media. Uh, so I guess you're gonna miss out on our super cool Vampire Hunter D yeah. Bloodlust talk. Our super super gothy uh, movie. Can we can we talk about how gothy that movie is? Yes. It's very gothy. It's it like is. it's it's two thousands Matrix gothy though. It is, and we'll we'll get into as why that is. Um, so plot of Vampire Hunter D um, for those who aren't familiar, uh, particularly Bloodless. Uh, this takes place in the year. 12,090 AD, um, a young woman named Charlotte is ab abducted mm -hmm. by a vampire named Baron Meyer Link. Charlotte's father hires a dampier who is half human, half vampire, um, named D, to find her, and if she is turned into a vampire, to end her life humanely. Yeah, and apparently all dampier. Uh, are super gloomy mm -hmm. and like emo kids that you knew in high school. This is like. I love it, but it's like the edge lord of all edge lords. Oh, yeah, movies. absolutely. <laughs> he is like the forefather of edge lordiness. <laughs> Since 1983. Um, so, yes, yeah, Charlotte's uh, brother and father hire uh, D um, and another group called the Marcus Brothers to basically be either one, be the first. Yeah, they're, they're, th these guys, this. Dude is just basically yeah. like from a well-off family, and they're just like throwing all their money at them to just get to like go back. find, just <laughs> find this girl, bring her back, or you know, bring back her body alive or dead. You know, yes. just make sure that she comes back. And in the Marcus brothers are also joined by another character, a woman named Layla, who basically doesn't hunt vampires for money. She does it for personal uh, reasons, um, aka vengeance. Um, and <laughs> AKA vengeance? <laughs> AKA yeah. vengeance. You don't do stuff for money, you do it for vengeance. Yeah, Let's revenge. make clear. Um, both as both groups uh, track down Meyer and Charlotte, it, they they realize that Charlotte has actually run away with Meyer and they are lovers and he is hoping to bring uh, Charlotte and himself to his matron, who's AKA, which I think they mean is the vampire who created him, Carmilla, so that she can help them oh, go. Oh, was that the yes. matron? I did not yes. know that. So, um, yeah, they don't make it very clear, oh. to be very fair. Um, so they get to her castle, and and instead of helping them, she has her own plans, which is to basically kill Charlotte and backstab Meyer. Yeah. And that's the plot yeah. of the story. Yeah, there you go. That, that's basically <laughs> that the whole story. That is the story. movie. Yeah. Uh, um, and so this was made by Madhouse. Correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, and if you don't know Madhouse, they're the the animators and producers of Ninja Scroll. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Bloodlust, you're like, oh, that looks this is, familiar. This is Ninja Scroll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like for the most part, there's a lot of like uh, different, a lot of references. I feel like from Ninja yes. Scroll, like especially in the action. There's a dude. They're always like throwing stuff. Yes. Like there's always throwing of shurikens or something like yeah, going something choo -choo 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 through the and, sky. And like they have a very distinct style that's very Ninja Scroll. This this actually started production in 1997, um, and wasn't released until 2000. And it was released for English audience. The the entire animation was done for English speaking. So Which is like kind of the weirdest yeah. backwards thing. It, it was like the first. Yeah. And, and I, I it's weird because like Vampire Hunter D is also like a purely Japanese franchise, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, Amano was the first person like this was his first like one of his first mangas, like one of his first works. So this is yeah. like based on like all Amano art. So that's 
obviously the most Japanese are gonna get. So I'm gonna correct you because oh, you're really? wrong. Am I wrong? <laughs> yes. Oh shit. You're wrong. That so, Wikipedia lied to me. So the actual novels are the oh there's novels there's, yes they're light novels there are 30 Ooh, right there are in total it's super confusing there's 30 total novels not including short stories and novels broken up into separate novels mm. um the author is hide hide yuki kikuchi hide yuki kikuchi and the original artwork for the novels was done by amano oh yeah. wait but I thought he made a manga, or was it just illustrations no, it for the book? it was illustrations for the book. For the light novel. Yes. That yeah, makes a lot that, of sense. That's what it okay. is. But a lot of people make that same mistake. A lot of people attribute it because the Vampire Hunter D artwork is so iconic for yeah. a mono, the mono style, but it is definitely a light novel, and it has been translated into English. Not all of them, though. Yeah. But, okay, so let's, going back to the original fact that these are Japanese books, there's Japanese mm -hmm. light novels, yet, you know, this new 2000 version of the animation, I mean, there was a Japanese 1983, 1985 version, yeah. uh, which was, you know, totally old school, it was 85, yes. you could definitely tell, the tropes are the same, uh, it's very dated, uh, but it kind of has like that kind of uh, pat labor Sort of yes. like 80s feeling to yes. it, you know, when everything was sort of animated that way. Yeah. Uh, Robotech also being one of them. You can kind of see like little Robotech kind of animation art style-esque yeah. uh, part of it. But um, the 2001 is kind of weird because you're just like, why did they make it for English? Like, why did they they animate it for English, which seems like a really strange uh, audience? Was it because that Ninja Scroll was popular and like they just want to like get in on it? Or So yes and no. Um, the, uh, the evolution of Vampire Hunter D actually is that it's very Japanese in that it was written by a Japanese person, person, but it's got this mix of like post-apocalyptic and vampire goth novel mm -hmm. um, and Western. It's He's like on the frontier and it's a very Western setting. Uh, I think that 1985 version and along with Madhouse being involved uh, had such a strong interest in the West that mm -hmm. they did it for the for Western audiences. But it is also during the same exact time they were working on the Animatrix program anime. Oh. Like for the Animatrix. That's why if you look at Layla, her design is almost exactly like the one from the from, program. From the program. Even down to oh, her yeah. hair. No, I was I was actually looking at uh program too and I was like, wow, there's like a lot of yes. similarities. Especially because it's 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 definitely better than ninja scroll animation wise like yes. technically yes. it's it's much better uh and you can definitely tell that cuz i think there's like a lot more 3d elements in the 2001 right like was there no it's all it's is all it, is that all hand drawn it's all hand drawn oh well that is amazing yeah, it's then. amazing because there's like some really cool photo reel scenes yes. to it and you're like oh maybe they did it in 3 is like yes. the first time they did it uh but like i definitely feel like the production value of um of uh, Vampire Hunter was mm -hmm. definitely noticeably more so than Ninja Scroll for sure. Yeah. And like, so uh, just to give you some background, the original 85 Vampire Hunter D anime was based off the first novel, which was um, Hunter D is what it's called. Mm. Bloodlust is based off of, it's very loosely based off of the third novel, which is Demon Death Chase. Uh, which it is translated into English and you can read it, but it there's a lot of differences and it's a lot a lot more grim. So the <laughs> way the first novel is the first movie, and yeah. the third novel is Bloodlust. Basically. Yeah. So the third novel is the second movie. Does he? Does yeah. that mean that every novel there's some chick that's like kind of in love so, with him? Yeah. Like it's it's the running trope of Vampire Hunter D. Um, it's not just women. He'll basically some shit goes down in a town, and somebody has to pay him right. to go do some something to rescue or like handle this problem. Yeah. And he'll arrive, and the main chick, who is usually in distress, or in this case, she's like a, she's like a vampire hunter as her, yeah. herself. They kind of have this weird relationship with him, but everybody always talks about how beautiful he is. Like it's so like it, everybody loves him. The whole thing is, it's like I even noticed from the first movie, and and especially in the third movies, because I'm just like this is one of the things that like. You, you're you have this really interesting pace everything's super dramatic yeah. and then one person just just randomly is like are you in love with him like they they say that in both the movies I'm like yeah is that like a thing 
Like, yeah. And then it's always like this explanation of like him being like, I can never love. Yes. <laughs> I am too much of a vampire. Yes. And like, I can get into that, but first, like, I want to go through. Um, I have a slide of the evolution of Vampire Entity, which you can see on the screen. Uh, so the Amano one is the 83 one. Right. 85, and then you get to Bloodless. Then after that, you have the 2007 manga uh -huh. that was drawn by Sakai. And then the last one is the upcoming comic book that is done by... There's a comic book Yes, out? they just got a Kickstarter by Stranger Comics. Ooh, nice. And the illustrator's name is Michael Brassard. Uh, but if you look at 2000 Bloodlust, every single one after that is completely based off Bloodlust. There's similarities to the Amano one, uh -huh. but the 85 one, I don't know where they went with that one. I... But you can yeah, see how the influential is totally for, different from from the, even from, the Amano yeah, art. You know, like, yeah. The Amano art is very decorative, but like if you look at 2001 Bloodlust D, it's all black with just a gem, and yeah. then 2007, and then like 2016. I, I thought the thing that was most striking about his design was like his pauldrons with the with the, the very spikes. with the very Amano looking spikes. Yes. Because all right, so if you're not familiar with Amano art, uh, Amano is, I guess you would know him by most of the cover art that he does for Final yes. Fantasy. So anytime you see like flowing hair, it's or locks where it's like there's like a thousand little curls in yes. them. And that's one strand of hair. And then except that their hair is all over the place because yeah. it's like being blown by like celestial yeah. winds and shit. Um, so like you can it's definitely that long face. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the um, very meticulous amount of eyelashes. Yeah. So, it, like, his art is very distinctive. Yes. And I, you're right. In the 85 version, I did not really notice no. that. It was just the dude with the hat and, like, you know, he wore, like, a cloak or whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah. whatever. Fine. And I think the the Madhouse D, yeah. Mer like, it it's such a good studio to use that Amano style uh -huh. because... Madhouse always does that long, pointy faces with kind of a hook nose and yeah. like the eyelashes. There is like two hundred per eye. Yeah, it's like amazing. And to know that they like hand animated that themselves yes. is pretty interesting. Um, but you know, like their sil the silhouette of D, like because when they introduce D, he's he's usually like cloaked. Yeah. You know, or there's like his cape is like blowing yeah. in the wind and like the moon is against him, like <laughs> silhouetting him. But he's then so it, beautiful. Yeah, but the silhouette is is very distinctive. Like I feel like if you saw a silhouette, just like a shape of him, mm -hmm. you know exactly like oh that's Vampire yeah. Hunter D, and that just like proves how much character he has. Like mm -hmm. also like his sword is iconic. Like the great thing about this movie is like. Everything is is so viv like vivid and interesting. Yes. You know, there's there's never a design where you're just like, eh, that's yeah. a design. And I think you know? it's like, I mean, I've seen the original artwork for the actual people, the char characters from Demon Death Chase. Mm -hmm. Madhouse took a lot of liberties and kind of redid up it. Uh, so a lot of the what you're seeing in Bloodlust is a Madhouse style. Yeah. And you can tell, totally tell, like, tell. all the vinyl suits that they wear yeah. and, like, the crosses on the Marcus Brothers' faces. That's all from that house. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Because yeah. that, you know, you're, it's very distinct. I mean, I just keep going back to Ninja Scroll because all the Ninja yes. Scroll bad guys or all the Ninja Scroll supplementary characters are always, like, super yeah. interesting. You know? Yeah. And uh, even the monsters that they fight are you know they each have their kind of like weird unique power and they have like their weird quirks and you know like everything is designed to a t which i thought was really awesome because it's like it's always like interesting to watch no matter who the no matter who's talking no matter what's going on there's always like something for you to like be like oh this this is like really exciting yeah and i think like the fact that like yoshiaki kawajiri i think this movie is basically at the peak and end of what he did best because I don't think he had a, a high hand in anything that came after this yeah, in 2000. Really. I think he was just executive producer. Um, but the story, I think he and Kikuchi uh, wrote it together. Mm -hmm. And I think even since I've seen this, it still holds up. I mean, this movie was released, it was meant to be released in the US and it was only actually released in uh, what some debate is either six theaters or 12 theaters la was one of the theaters because i remember like because we progressive yeah that's but why it, it's it's basically what one of the very few first anime that they produced and released in america first yeah because japan didn't actually get to see it in theaters until 2001 and it was english with japanese subtitles 
Oh, that must be yeah. really weird for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the so... Japanese language, uh, which which I did watch for this, mm -hmm. um, it's hard to come by, and they only released it on like a like not the not even the English version DVD. It wasn't until they released it on Blu-ray that they gave you oh. the Japanese language one. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, even watching it now, like I watched it on YouTube and like potato quality, but the potato quality was still was like amazing. excellent. Like, you know, and you, the, it goes to show you that you can digitize everything now, but you're just never going to get like that really nice style, like that kind of weird organic crispness of, yeah. of like hand drawn. Like, I, I feel like I really want that to come back, you know? Yeah. Like, a good portion of Miyazaki movies are good because, because of that. Because they're hand-drawn, yeah. You know, and Akira is wonderful because of that. I mean, of course, it takes a crap ton of work. Yes. And, you know, there's a lot of violated labor laws. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's what you sacrifice for good art. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's but, just... I mean, it, it holds up. Like, I think even watching it in the Japanese version this time, this is, like, my second time watching uh -huh. it in Japanese, but I notice a lot of things, like, there's a lot of differences in the English version and the Japanese version, like, as far as dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, the the way the artwork is done, like, you could literally release this tomorrow and say that we just did it last year, and I would believe it because it's oh, so well done. Yeah. And, and like, I mean, even now, like, that story, uh, that story is just, like, so beyond the cusp of all the crap vampire things that we've yeah, had in the past, true. like, ten years. Like, I, I just, it's so hard to describe because the story is is very intricate. And it's not really necessarily about, like, you know, the vampire being like, blah, I'm being, like, this scary figure. It's yeah. like an empathetic character, which is very hard to come by because, it, you know, because vampires are either one, like, infall infallibly cool, mm -hmm. which is really the most annoying trope or they're like total monsters yes. you know i would say if, if there's an example of something vampire that is close to this it'd be bram stoker's dracula yes um because to a certain extent bram stoker is really more about just like him f trying to find like love again you yeah know? <laughs> like, I mean, but then you also have like there is a bit of because i mean at the core of this movie yes it's kind of like d from like kind of following d but you get this very sympathetic vampire um it's a mix of Bram Stoker's with, like, Interview of the Vampire. Like, these are the saddest mm, vampires in yeah. the world. You know, the, another good theme is uh, that I think uh, the both the original and this Bloodlust version has is, like, we are vampires, and we are, like, you don't understand what it's like to live all of these yeah. years. Like, the first, the first one is pretty straightforward. It's more like Dracula, except, like, yes. if Dracula was, like, a fuck boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like his whole thing is just like I just like I just want to like you know do a mortal and like yeah just I just have want her. young pretty girls yeah young pretty girls until like I get tired of them and then I'll destroy them and then I'll just get yeah. more young pretty girls and, and you're like well you are a very unlikable guy and yeah. I hope you get stabbed by a sword. And as, in this you know, one, in this one, you see the two opposites of uh, Meyer, who I don't know if they actually stated, but like he doesn't take life needlessly like if he has to take a life there's a reason like yeah. he has to feed he just doesn't go around killing because in this world uh the the vampires are the nobility and ruling class and for centuries they were just killing people like cattle yeah. but this is at the end of it when there are less vampires and he's oh, very sympathetic to humans that makes whereas, sense. whereas you have carmilla and carmilla who is killed by d's father d's father's dracula by the way yeah <laughs> um because she just had an insatiable bloodlust. So you have this, like, cruel, monstrous, like, vampire who's very beautifully drawn, and yeah. then this very sympathetic one. Can I mention one of my favorite scenes is where uh, she goes up and she sees this picture of Camilla, and the words that cut, come out of her mouth is, nice hat. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck are you on? She's not wearing a hat at all. Yeah. It's, I it's mean, her hair. It's her hair. Her hair is, like, this large. It's, like, these tubular things, and it's, like, regaled and everything. It's, like, bitch, do you know what a hat is? Like, that's... I mean, I don't know why. It just, like, uh, automatically took me out. Because they're in, like, this crazy gothic castle. Yes. It's, like, super future, but it has all the, like, crazy, yeah. like, gothic themes in it. And you're, like, wow, that's beautiful. And then the only word you can say is, nice, nice hat. hat. Yeah. <laughs> like, who Plus, wrote it's like this? Carmilla, when you introduce her, they they don't tell you that she's a ghost of a vampire. Her actual yeah. body is like at the top of these fucking stairs, and like 
you just you, like of all these things that you pick out like a hat that's not really even a hat yeah and, and just I don't know why I thought I was super funny yeah. but I just like kind of like <laughs> busted out laughing uh, but uh, another thing I think this does really well is the fact there's like this underlying conspiracy with mm-hmm. Camilla and you know he's going over to to like kind of like find refuge from yes. from her uh, from his mentor but really like she's the one that's planned all of yes. this from the very beginning and I think the thing that they do really well in this um, and I don't know why it's kind of this trope to have like in Japanese animation to have like a lot of exposition yeah. that just kind of like you know, they just kind of, like, talk about it for no real reason. Yeah. Except to, like, conveniently explain things. Yeah. And they don't really explain a lot in this. In this. They, it's a lot of, like, they, they do a lot of showing, which I thought was a very, like, surprisingly uh, well well done, like, light-handed touch that they put into yeah. this. Which just adds to uh, uh, just how great this movie was. Even to a certain extent, even better than Ninja Scroll, because Ninja Scroll was a lot of exposition. Yes, Ninja Scroll had a lot of exposition. You know, there was always like, I'm going to explain my powers, I'm going to explain this conspiracy. And that Baron D, like, almost all of it is just show. showing. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm just like, that is a good example, even in cinema today, yeah. of how it should be done. You know, just like these subtle cues, and then it's these... And and then it's like this big reveal that even when they reveal it, they don't even like tell you how to connect the dots. It's yeah. more of a thing that you're like, oh, here are the pieces. Mm-hmm. Holy crap, that's really amazing. Yeah. It's true. Like there's so much subtlety in this yeah. movie. Um, but yeah, like with that, let's get into vampires in anime. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, I guess it's just like vampires are like one of the most overused tropes especially yes, in in anime i feel like i mean maybe not overused because i feel like we also use vampires as much as uh japanese people do um but japanese people just love the shit out of vampires and you know obviously it's yeah you can you can understand why um but let's see i guess the one that everyone knows and is the most popular it would be helsing yeah like everyone knows helsing everybody knows helsing yeah, yeah um and it's just I don't know. What's your favorite, like, vampire-y thing? I have a list. I mean, so we're going to go through the a list. A favorite, like, vampire trope, or...? You're like, what's your favorite vampire character? Well, if if you saw this and you're like, I want to see more vampire anime, like, what would you watch? See, this is the problem, because my favorite vampire-related thing is Vampire Hunter D. I knew you were going to say that, and that's why I give you options. Yes. <laughs> Other than Vampire Hunter D, I have to say, well, in anime... Yeah, it can be anime. I have to say, it's Blood Blood Plus. Oh, Blood Plus. That's a Blood good one. Blood Plus was an amazing yeah. series. If you don't know what Blood Plus is, Blood Plus is about, like, um, a girl, like, in her high, in high school. In high school. Uh, and she ends up, like, being... I guess she ends up awakening her blood, I guess. But yeah. this is based on a another movie called Blood the movie, and that's yeah. actually another very popular movie. I can't remember when it came out. I think it came out like ninety five ish. But if you're really into vampires, uh, that's definitely another one. And yeah. if you if you uh, know anything about blood, it would be that it's like the schoolgirl, and then she kind of like she kind of just has a sword, and she takes yeah. down these like very more monstrous looking vampires. Yeah. You know, uh, I think they're what are they called? They're like, called Chimera. Are they called Chimera? Chimera? Yeah, in Blood Plus, they're called Chimera. Oh, I think it was Corticeps or something in, yes, in the in movie. Yes, in Blood, Blood, The Last Vampire. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it has this kind of, like, conspiracy. Did you, I forgot this, but they made a live-action movie of Blood. Oh, my God, it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. It, like, makes no sense. All the cool stuff they just took out, and they just, oh, man, and this is, this is the thing that I hate the most, is, like, if you don't know how to speak language, don't pretend to yeah, know pretend. how to speak that language, because they do. And it's like someone that doesn't clearly speak Jap- uh, speak English very well, and then they just have like this whole monologue at the end. And I'm just like, this this movie was gonna be a train wreck to begin with. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. But like, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so as far as like as far as like a like vampire stuff goes, like I really liked Blood Plus just because it's like yes, it's Saya who does who doesn't realize that she's like basically one of the potential queens to this entire like race of monstrous yeah. vampire beings. Um, and then she awakens, and, like, there is a lot of complications and nuances to her actual life, because, yeah. like, her sister ends up being 
her mortal nemesis. Uh, spoilers. Hello. Whatever. I didn't finish the second season. Fuck but you, dude. <laughs> the, the cool thing is, good response. Uh, you know, uh, the cool thing is, is I think it's like every time vampires appear in things, it's always like the blood is an important part. And I feel like that's a thing that like, uh, I would say Interview for a Vampire kind of has a very interesting mm-hmm. like blood lore, um, which is, you know, you can't drink the blood of the dead or like, you yeah. know, you get other memories. Like there's always some sort of, like trope that they use i feel like the thing about uh japanese anime it's like they emphasize that yeah. so it's like they use their blood to turn it into size and yeah. like spikes and stuff or yeah. like because their uh, blood is a weapon yeah blood plus it's like the she uses her blood to like basically overtake all the other like i guess chimera blood yeah. you know like the unclean blood yeah so it's like i i there's always that super shonen action version of it which i always thought was like yes. cool um, and Helsing is Helsing is another beast yes. altogether. I would say Helsing is my favorite because it goes through a bunch of like they're vampires and then there's like werewolves and there's it's not traditional. There's oh it's something that's super unique, you know. Yeah. But uh, it definitely goes within like this abstract power of like Bram Stoker Dracula, where it's like I have a dog, but it's like his dog is like I don't know this giant twelve eyed monstrosity yeah. beast it's, that like. Yeah. I don't know, but it, it's definitely definitely one to check out. If you haven't seen Helsing, shame on you. Um, let's see. There is also the new one that came out, which is Owari no Seraph, and that came out recently, and it was pretty. It was a pretty popular hit. It's um, it's basically it. demons versus <laughs> vampires, and there's you know another weird thing is like, that I don't know if there's any like American thing where like. The world is just the vampires have taken over society. Like they've, they're just like this integral. They're just yeah. like the top dog. Like I feel like that doesn't really exist. Maybe you know what you missed on this? What? Dance in the Vampire Bund. I told no. It's a, it's it's right here. What? Where it's is right it? underneath. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, Dance in the Vampire Bund. Because that's like that. We're like, yeah. it, it's kind of similar. Where like vampires are kind of a ruling class. They have their own society. Yeah, and then it, that one is different because it's like, hey, we're vampires. They out themselves and like we're yes. gonna integrate into society. Let's see if there's an American movie. Uh, what the hell was that called? Uh, with I can't remember. God. I can't remember. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Willem Dafoe's in it, and the dude from Xanadu, which I can't remember his name. Ethan Hawke. Oh, um, God, I know what you're talking Chat, about. Chat, if you know, if you know what I'm talking about, please, or I guess Omar, seeing how you're the only one chatting, <laughs> so I'm yes. just gonna talk to you. Uh, <laughs> yes, Omar. Yeah, just look that up. Ethan Hawke movie. Us. Yeah, the Ethan Hawke movie. I can't remember the name of it. It's not from Dust Till Dawn. Um, but that's also a vampire movie, and that's a good one, by the way. Yes. Um, so let's see, what other things can I recommend? Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I totally forgot, was about vampires. In yes. The yes. I totally forgot that it was about vampires too. Yeah, and I just remembered how weird that was because I had not seen the first season of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I was like, "It's about vampires," <laughs> and that's where uh, Hado comes from because it's like it's them gathering power from the sun, mm-hmm. uh, and then it comes into like Dio is a vampire that's why he keeps staying alive yeah. and that's why he was able to take over the body but then for some reason he lost all of his vampire powers or he was he no, he was still a vampire right but it's like I can't remember. he's not he's not really a vampire anymore in the in the traditional sense of what we think vampires are yeah. he's just kind of immortal now yeah in the second season too the he still fights the other vampires or I guess the the superhumans that I guess they were vampires yeah uh so that's how JoJo starts, and now we get this where they're like trying to find serial killers in like a uh, suburban home. Okay. Yeah. But Japanese vampire, they they fall under like various cliches of like it's really ridiculous and silly, like Nyampire, mm-hmm. which is like a cat. Nyampire is, is a cat great. who's a vampire, <laughs> and then you have things like Vampire Night, which is like super shoujo. Like mm-hmm. I go to a school and the the council is all vampires and they're beautiful and they that's, all that's, want my it's blood. It's basically the twilight yeah. of, of... And by the way, Japan has done twilight for us like multiple times. Yeah. So twilight it's is like, not a new thing. No. <laughs> twilight is, is is old hat it America. Is. I just, I hope you guys know that. Uh, Daybreakers it's called. Thank you, Omar. Yes, Daybreakers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and let's see. Shiki is a good one. That one's more psychological. Um... A Bakemonogatari, but that has a bunch of other like monsters in it. Uh, it's, yeah. 
I don't know if you guys haven't seen it. It's definitely um, one of the more visually interesting series out there. It's not necessarily about vampires. It's just like it's has about vampires different. In it? it has like different. It's about like different yokai. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, there's that. I don't know. I think that's about and Trinity Blood. If you guys haven't seen Trinity Blood, that's like that's an oldie but a goodie. Trinity Blood is good visual. I did not yeah. like the story, but visually it's good. But it definitely, like, Japanese vampires in the sense. And, like, I think Vampire Dead D, it, it gets a lot of roots for, I think it should get a lot of props for being one of, like, the bigger first Japanese vampire, like, tropes. I think it, it built a lot of what they see as vampires, like, the, the being super mm-hmm. beautiful, but all powerful and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I feel like that was, that's that's always kind of been a, like predicated image because it's like uh, Interview with the Vampire definitely mm-hmm. came out before Vampire Hunter D and I feel like that was, no? Wait. No. The original Vampire Not, Hunter D? Oh, no. okay, yeah. the original Vampire Bloodlust. I think Interview with the Vampire yeah, right. had a lot of influence in Bloodlust because of the love story and like yeah. the way that D and Meyer they're portrayed as very like depressing, gloomy, and lonely, but... Uh, yeah, what was the first thing that was like very much like, oh, vampires are beautiful? Yeah, like, for me, I mean, I, I can't say I've done a lot of research into it, but, like, for me, Vampire Hunter D was one of those firsts mm. that I ever saw. Like, it was my first exposure to a Dumpier, which is, like, an actual thing mm-hmm. that is in lore. Um, but, yeah, like, the whole beautiful, lonely vampire kind of shit, like, that's the, my first experience with it. Yeah. And, like, that's 1985. So unless there's, like, some other Japanese anime that, per, like, superseded that, I don't know. Yeah, no, I can't really think of anything either. And by the way, Underworld, the new movie is coming out, yes. which I don't know why we need the third Underworld movie after uh, the, is it the, the fourth, fourth one. The fourth <laughs> Underworld movie uh, after the first two or the first one. <laughs> I would have been okay with just one Underworld movie. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's true. There's too many Underworld movies. Um, let's get into comparisons. So like I said, I watched the Japanese version, and Max watched the English mm-hmm. original version, and he also watched the old 85 version. Version, yeah. Um, there were a lot of things that I just want to point out. The English script is all, like, there are a lot of parts that are completely different or omitted in the Japanese version, um, because the one that I watched... There was Japanese language, and I've watched enough anime to kind of know what's happening. Mm-hmm. But the subtitles were all from the English version. And mm-hmm. I watched the English version so many times, I know that it's from the English version. But there's, like, a part where, like, Meyer and Charlotte are riding in the, the carriage, and he's like, who's going to mourn the vampires when, when we're all extinct? That part does not happen in the Japanese version. Oh. Nothing is said. Wow. That yeah. must have been for a very awkward yeah. carriage Yeah, the hat ride. thing doesn't happen in the Japanese version. Well, they're missing out on some comedy and, gold. Yeah, the biggest part that is super different is in the novel Demon Death Chase, mm-hmm. Layla is the youngest sister of the Marcus clan, and a lot the brothers do a lot of bad things to her. I will just say that. They oh, do a man. lot of bad things to her. In the in the western version of it, when they talk about it, she says, "Oh, I was like found and you know like i joined up with him later after my mom died they allude to that in the japanese version but she definitely calls him nissan like at first i was like wait did she just call them like brother and i was like is it because they're familiar no like at some point they also call her their sister so like that is very like much in reference to the book because they're all from the same clan and she is the youngest sister and they beat her and do terrible things to her and so the reason why she ends up falling with, in love with D in the book is because he's the first person that's nice to her. Wow, that's messed yeah, up. Yeah, it's real dark. So, that's uh, a totally different yeah, side of this but, that I didn't yeah, notice. It, you, won't, you won't see any of that in the English version, but if you understand enough Japanese from watching anime, you will catch it. Oh, so that's it's, interesting. It's very, is that in the books at all? Yes, the uh, books go into great detail. Well... They seem like assholes. Yeah. To be then, so honest. like they basically make it so that the Marcus brothers are absolutely detestable. But in the in the anime, they kind of allude to this kind of like love ter- character relationship between Layla and Grove. Yeah. Uh, in the in the book, he is the nicest one to her. But like Kyle and Nolt and the other ones, like they're they're super like they beat her and they do like really fucked up shit to her. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, that's messed up because those guys die really quickly. Yes. <laughs> it's They're like, like they, you're dead. The, the, the like uh, the dude with the the hammer spike, like he comes out and he like kills like twelve vampires. Like, all right, that's cool. And then the next scene, he's dead. Dead. He's just straight up dead. Like he doesn't like, even get to swing his yeah. hammer or do like some incredible battle thing. He just like stands there and, I wanna, and then dies. I want to point out that like because that's Nolt. His voice is John DiMaggio, and like what? So Jake, the dog, does six voices in this movie. Oh man! He does Nolt. He does the sheriff. Uh-huh. He does like the dude at the end with like the the priest at the end with like the prayer at the funeral, uh-huh. and he does like a couple other voices. I can't remember, but like I was like, he did six voices. All right. Okay. So I have a question. I don't uh-huh. know if you know this or not. In the original '85 version, who voices D? Because I feel like. I want to say he's Seijiro Hiko from, oh, maybe it's Saito. Oh, my God. Maybe it's the person that does the English voice for Saito in Riona Kenshin. I think it is. Um, but he, he definitely is someone in Riona Kenshin. <laughs> and when I heard his voice, I just I looked it up and everything. I couldn't find it. So if there's any internet sleuths out there, please, please tell let me us the, know. The, who the voice actor is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, those brothers are... Are crazy, but I really like Grove, like his power, where yes. he like uses that, uh, I guess, like celestial body. It's like like doom laser thing. Yes, yeah, so it's like they. There's a lot more Christianity in the anime, and I think it's because Kawajiri himself really likes Christian imagery. Mm-hmm. But like Grove's whole thing is like the whole like Holy Spirit kind of power. Ah, that makes And that's why like Noel has like a giant cross on his face, and yeah, like they have a cross subtle. in their tank. Um, but yeah, I liked his powers a lot. Like I didn't really understand them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like it's it's very. I guess you know, like that makes he's kind of the one of the more interesting of the brothers because mm-hmm. like the other the other three are like very predictable. They're just yeah. like kind of assholes at like action, you know. Yeah. And you're like, okay, whatever, sure, you know. Like they're very generic comparatively to him, where he just like. I guess he uses this uh, this sort of, like, serum or something yeah. that, like, clearly wrecks the shit out of yes. his body. But, like, uh, then he turns into, like, this basically laser spirit, and then yeah. he just shoots lasers and is, like, He's the most like... destructive force. And that's the whole thing is I thought that was a very good part because I'm like, okay, you guys fight vampires, and you guys are pretty good, but, like, there's... There's, so many of them. Yeah, there's yeah. so many, like, super-powered monsters out there. Like, how do you even cope? And then you, like, look at him, and you're like, oh, Oh, I see. that's how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how. And, and you're like, yeah, into, makes sense. So, because like, they go into that city where, like, th- all the monsters are like, no, we've been paid, like, $100 million whatever money yeah. the, to protect Meyer and Charlotte. So, they're like, we're going to kill you now, D. And then Grove comes in, and he just, like, blasts the shit out of that yeah. city. Yeah, <laughs> he's just, like, a nuclear bomb. And the whole time, he's, like, he's, like, smiling, too. He's, like, all very euphoric and kind yeah. of like adds like this kind of uh, disturbed vibe to it. Like he's just like yeah. super high out of his mind and exactly. and somehow is like laser man. Yeah. So uh, I thought that part was super awesome. Um, and it's like little stuff. Is that, I'm assuming that's on a part of the books, right? Is that, that's not like an original thing they describe in the books? I don't remember what his powers are, to be honest. Oh, because, I mean, it's been so long since I've read it. Because I feel like that's a very madhouse thing to do. Yes. Like, know? his powers are very madhouse. That's why I'm like, I don't know if it's part of the actual, of the actual, like, story. Because I know that in the actual book, all I remember is that, like, Layla, her skill is that she's better at mechanics than her brothers. And she's very good at building and solving problems. Uh-huh. And they treat her like shit. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These brothers and sound think, like assholes. Like, I'm glad that they all died. Yeah, some of the names are kind of different too. Like Meyer Link mm-hmm. in the uh, book, his name is Meyerling. Meyerling. Yeah, not Meyer Link. Meyer Ling. It's like there's some weird like things. I mean, they're that all of their, all of their names are pretty weird. Yeah. So it's like a very like strange mix. Yeah. Like of like some of it's like sounds Chinese, some of it's European, some of it's like yeah. Japanese. It's a whole mix of stuff. Uh, what was your favorite bad guy? What was your, like, favorite bad guy power? Uh, the bad guys, I am super partial to Caroline, the shapeshifter. Uh-huh. I think, like, she was just, I think her design is really cool. It's yeah, a yeah. very madhouse design. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can, you, the whole blending into, like, different textures thing, like, yeah. they love that. Like, yes. that is, uh, and Shadow Guy, if you can't remember the, the, the Shadow Ninja from Ninja Scroll, like, he was yeah. basically the it same, was the same. Guy. I felt like he was, like, such a throwaway. Yeah, it was just, like, a European version of him, yeah. you know? Uh, uh, I like the, um, uh, I thought, like, the werewolf was cool, but, like, 
they barely use him. Yeah. Like, he basically, like, you see the super cool werewolf guy. His mouth opens up into, like, a werewolf mouth. And, and like, you know, he has, like, this cool werewolf form and kills one of the brothers. And he, like, he just, like, also, like, digs up all these bombs because apparently he's also a dog. Uh, and so, like, he fights D. And the whole fight is him going to D. You just see him, like, do a single cut. And he's like, I am died. And, <laughs> yes. like, why... Why make such a cool character and not utilize him? And exactly. I, I wonder I wonder if there was, like, a, a pacing thing. Like, they were just like, it's not in the budget. Or it's just yeah. like, a fight would be too long. But yeah. they just missed out on a really cool fight. And kind of like, Because eh. I think it's worth reading the book. Because I feel like the, the characters have mm. more to do. Because I'm pretty sure Caroline and the other... I can't even remember the other two guys' names. Uh, they exist in the book. And there's, like, a whole drawn-out thing. And, like, the fights happen with D and Layla fighting these guys. Yeah. And I, I think it just was pacing and, like, trying to make a movie, like, not four hours. I mean, I, if it was four hours, I'd be okay with it. I mean, they could have added an extra they could have, five like, minutes of They could have literally action. done two movies, and I would have still yeah. watched them, and it was amazing. I mean, I would I would say, like, if you're, if you're thinking of, like, a gothic romance, like, there is really no better example of it. Yeah. In my, in my opinion, you know, it's like it, a lot of people try to emulate that feeling, and this one just kind of, like... Even with the atmosphere of the world, uh, the characters, even just, like, the art style, like, all of it just kind of, like, gravitates towards, like, gothic romance. Yeah, it's, at its core, this movie is a love story, and, and then there's, like, other themes, which I wrote down, just, like, there's this kind of, like, forbidden love between, a, uh, like, a vampire and a human, and then there's, there's star-crossed like, lovers. Yeah, and then, like, you have this, like, outsider, which is, like, like kind of Meyer is kind of an outsider yeah. so is D because he's not really human or vampire Layla is an outsider yeah and like all of this is like incredibly gloomy and sad and all of them are incredibly lonely and then when you see that like Charlotte and Meyer have like a relationship everybody roots for them like yeah. even D is like okay well she wants to be there and he has to kind of battle with this, the fact that his mom was a human that was in love with a vampire yeah and also it's just like um Man, I totally forgot what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, but there was a really cool scene that I just it popped up into my head. Is like, you know, that that scene where he like picks up the ring with his sword. Yeah. Well, let's get into favorite scenes because okay, uh, we've okay. got a couple minutes left. So let's get into favorite scenes. What's yours? Uh, my favorite scenes. Well, all the fight scenes are really cool. Yeah. Like you got it. You know, Madhouse does one thing really, really, really well, and that's fight, fight scenes. scenes. Uh, the fight scene uh, with the count and D. That's a really good one. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was gonna ask. What the hell is that hand? They never describe okay. the hand. So the hand is, it's not really his left hand. It's a parasite that has become his left hand. So like whenever Dee's in, like it tucks shit to him and stuff. Yeah. And it also empowers him. So whenever he gets tired or whatever, the hand like eats dirt and gets more powers or whatever. Yeah. And it can also like suck things. And It like, seems like he's like, it can like, he can dispel spells too yes. with it. It like, it helps give him protection along with like that blue stone that he wears. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like... But why is it a parasite? Is it like, a, was it a human before? I don't know. Because you, I think it's not even really Described very well in explained books. in the books. He just has it. Uh -huh. And you kind of accept it. Oh, yeah. He's definitely comic relief, yeah. though. Like, yeah. Even even uh, the way that it ends is like, uh, you're going to be like a vampire or whatever, but like, not very well dressed. And like, that's yeah. that's how the movie ends. Like, you're exactly. just like, this, this hands quip is, yeah. is how they're like, we're gonna, this is how we're gonna finish off this epic romance uh, novel, basically. <laughs> With this quip. <laughs> With this quip. You got it. You got it, left hand. You're gonna make it. Um, my favorite scene, I would have to say, though, still was, man. Yeah, just like that ending scene is pretty, pretty. The, I thought the ending was like super solid. So from mm -hmm. the moment, like not like right after the fight, even when they're just like talking to each other, and they like, and he like picks up the body, he picks up the ring, and they go up into space. Like that is so such a good ending. Yeah. Like if you're looking for like drama and you're looking for yes. tension and you're looking for melancholy, like that scene had everything. 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 Because I mean, it was like. You didn't actually know if that, like, goth rocket was going to make it out of the atmosphere. Yeah. And then, like, of course it was sad because Charlotte's dead and, like, he's still trying. Yeah. Like, all of these things were happening. And you're just like, man, this is so, like, it's like a, like, emotional peak. We were just like, wow. Yeah. It's just, it's, 
the the storytelling in this is so so well done mm -hmm. it's like it's almost meticulous and you yes. got to appreciate something like that you know something that can like keep a pace and still be exciting yeah and and still kind of like bring out this this emotion and i'd have to say it's one of those uh one of those pieces of anime art where you're like anime can be anything yeah anime can be an art form and it, this isn't if this isn't like a, one of the shining golden examples yes. of that i have no clue why exactly uh i agree like my favorite it's hard to choose because i love this movie so much um one of my favorites is that part where like they capture the the brothers captured charlotte and basically myers like out of the cage in the sunlight trying to fucking get her and oh yeah it's like so harsh and it's just like it's I don't get emotional, but I'm like, oh, man, this is such an emotional moment because he basically is, like, proving to D and everybody else, like, he really loves this girl. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't want to go, and he's basically t willing to risk his entire being and existence to get her back. Yeah. Uh, and and so he was like, wow, that is dramatic. Yeah. Like, that is some was, real... Oh, man. That is some real romance. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I think this movie, like, it, it definitely is, like, a gothic romance with an amazing like it's kind of sci-fi gothic post-apocalyptic and action all it, in one it's, you know the crazy thing is like this is so unique mm -hmm. like even starting from the world building on it's every single part of it is just like wow that's a well, that is a crazy premise that is like yes like a bender like a weak bender of lsd premise like amazingness mm -hmm. you know uh and it's just the way that he they mixed it all together too it it all seems cohesive still yes. you know even the robot horses you're like yeah the robot horses still make sense in this yeah. world or like the weird art deco car car carriage yeah you know like it's it, they blended it and then the world was so strong yeah and even though it's gothic it's still somehow steampunk and even mm -hmm. though it's still somehow steampunk it's still uh it's still like very much that old like gothic trope yeah you know? and I don't know. It's I. If you haven't seen this, you should. Like yeah. this is definitely one of the ones that you can recommend to your friends yes. and be like, hey, you want to see some good anime? This is this it. is it. Uh, so on that note, let's let's thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, we call it. Uh, what is it called? The, to the lions. To the lions. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Uh, yes. I mean, that was I obvious. mean it was obvious. I mean, Come on. I mean, I love this movie, and it's lasted. I mean, it's just held up. This like over 10 years it's amazing oh yeah absolutely and i think it's like you said it's a shining example of what great anime is and like it's worth referring to people and watching because it's so good god All right. i love it yeah but, and you know once again if you also like ninja scroll you might as well watch, yeah, might as well watch the cool this. copious amount of violence so yes, there's also that exactly too. <laughs> uh, so something that, for everyone that's it uh thanks for joining us next week uh john will be picking and i think yeah. michelle and jonathan will be back joining us so thanks for tuning in See you next week. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 